What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Before we get started, I will never understand this. Going three days on this channel without putting up content and then blasting out. If you look at the couple's channel as well, what really is four videos in less than 24 hours. She does this all the time. It, it really shows for someone that says, I don't look at the numbers. I don't care about my income. I don't look at the views. It shows that she does. And it shows the desperation. And I promise you, I guarantee you, the analytics tell her not to do this. Plan better, prepare videos to go up, and then you won't have these large droughts without content that you feel you have to make up for by just continually posting content with an insane amount of embedded ads. She says that this is going to be just snacks and drinks, that they're ordering a main meal each day, and this way she can have rice, she can have chicken, she can have vegetables. It really is the perfect blend of convenience and budgeting. She says that she's learning to control herself. And these snacks, this counting calories, I'd also like to point out 90 seconds and we get a second ad. That's what's going to be the objective here. And she openly talks about looking foolish while doing this but tries to defend it as, you know, eating in moderation, repairing her relationship with food. The reality is, Chantal, none of these things that you've tried have been long-term successful solutions. And that's why even you yourself have to address them as illogical. And I really haven't spoke about this much, but uh, personally, it's my belief that surrounding yourself with temptation is teaching yourself willpower, not moderation. So let me give you a different example. Let, let's say we had Chantal walk past a whole buffet of food, right? A whole just long line of buffet. and All the favorites are there. At the end, if she hasn't gotten any of the food, right? You would look at her and you'd say, great job. You know, you had willpower. You didn't want anything. You wouldn't say, great job, moderation. That's where she gets completely lost in what she's trying to articulate with this food. You need the willpower to stay disciplined, not the moderation to stay disciplined. And this is very much one of her failure points. And I think she creates goals without even understanding where she's trying to get to. She makes this illogical correlation that you know, counting calories and having snacks is far more sustainable and stable than just eating meat. Okay, but the truth is no one's making that comparison. But again, my opinion, if we took that argument and we broke it down, would you rather see her have a few pieces of beef jerky, maybe a slice of turkey breast as a snack instead of a few bags of chips? You know, I think most people are going to side with, yes, have the jerky, have the turkey. But, but again, she's taking two completely separate paths. One being calorie counting and the other being a meat-based diet and then trying to pivot them against each other in a way that no one else is to try to make the goal she's setting for herself more appealing. And it's funny because she holds up this box and, you know, as she's doing this, I'm thinking to myself, this is designed to appeal to her. Fresh, natural, grain, all of these things strategically placed so that when someone like Chantal looks at them, presumes it's a healthy option. And what's hilarious is she actually points it out during the video. After I took those notes, she laughs and says junk food is being packaged as healthy. Yes, Chantal, you understand. It's still fried. It's still processed. If it's coming out of a bag, it can't be fresh. It can only stay fresher based on preservation, salt, vacuum packaging. She says she doesn't know what many of these are, but then calls just about all of them out by name. And she says, look, I'm trying to limit myself. Have maybe one, maybe two. And it's okay because... It's only 100 calories or so a bag. And she tries to micromanage her calories in so many ways. She should not be looking at this and saying, oh, 20 bags 
each of them is 100 calories. So I, I can have one a day. She should be looking at this box and saying, that's 2,000 calories. That's what I claim my budget is for a full day of eating. So why am I going to put myself at risk by bringing this in? And of course, we move on to candy. Admittedly, something she eats, his Snicker bars. But she says these candies, they're different. She doesn't like wafers. And yeah, there's the normal eggs. There's the normal 20 pack of noodles. But you know, she even admits that this is a quote, dangerously good food that presents a quote, real challenge for her. Chantel, food is not a challenge. This again goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning. You're bringing in foods that you know shouldn't be there with the premise of, I'm going to challenge myself. Me and these noodles are going to go head to head and I'm going to win. Chantal, you're not going to win. You've proven this. You give in to the noodles and you say as much. And I understand this video is meant to trigger a lot of people, but she says, listen, I have up to four of these packs at a time. But everything's different now because I'm adding veggies. You know, I'm bulking them up and tricking my brain. I'm adding in cream. I'm adding in tomato paste, which again, it shows us calories get snuck in all the time. You know, it's just not enough to have the noodles. It's not enough to have the treat. We have to have the treat plus heavy cream. Another ad less than six minutes in, and this is basically just showcasing junk food. She moves on to processed meats. Cappuccino that comes with chocolate sprinkles. Two packs of pitas. Two loaves of bread. The white bread, though. The white bread was for Salah. She only gets this multigrain. Butter. Cheese. Broccoli cream. She jokes that she uses so much cream and butter. And of course, she's been craving French fries. French fries and Burger King. So she's going to have the healthier option here. Healthier in terms of what, Chantal? It's still a fried potato. It's just coming frozen. Not from a fast food restaurant. Eight minutes in, another ad. But again, remember, she doesn't pay attention to her income. She just has four ads in less than nine minutes. And of course, she finishes with this massive bag of soda. And, and don't worry, the diet sodas are for her. She then rambles on about, you know, what viewers must get. Do they rely on takeout each day? She tries to justify this. It, it, it generally is the same thought process. You know, the food is so inexpensive, how can she not get it? She can't go wrong. The cost of the meal, it comes with sides, it comes with a drink, and she doesn't even have to worry, and these are her words, she doesn't have to worry about the, quote, added stress of cooking, and that cooking is, quote, a burden she doesn't have to bear. Chantal. You are fortunate enough to be on a platform like YouTube where you don't have to go punch a time clock. Yet here you are sitting there talking about the stresses of cooking and the burden of making a meal for yourself. This is where so many people lose all ability to relate to you. And to sit there and say, you know, all of this healthy food that I order, it's, it's not fast food. I can supplement it with all these snacks because it's coming from a restaurant that, that isn't a fast food chain. You know, she has to edit this video. She has to seal. She emphasizes this is her content. I mean, I, I guess she's the only one doing this. I mean, essentially showing junk food off like it's QVC, then, then so be it. But before I get to your comments, I want to highlight this one. This is the only one at the time of me recording that she had responded to. And I think it shows her mindset. I think it shows her defiance. And the comment essentially centers around, would you tell someone that they need to learn to be comfortable around something that triggers them? And they share an experience they have. This person is trying to be relatable. You know, in this case, it just happens to be alcohol. That they needed to accept personal responsibility, remove it from their life, so that they wouldn't want it. And you see Chantal's response. Alcohol is not food. You know, Chantal, my response to this is very simple. You're correct in the fact that it's not. But that's really the only definition of correct that you're falling into here. Because you need to understand that alcohol is a poison. 
it poisons the body. All of the snacks and junk that you bought in this hall do the very same thing to you. Your body cannot process them correctly, and in the long term, it damages your organs. It is a poison. So this person is actually giving you an extremely fair comparison. But as usual, you're looking to create this counter-argument that your issues, they're special. Your issues, they're different. Because your issues, well, they're with food. You say this all the time, you know, people have to eat. So she should be able to eat on camera. People have to eat so she can have all this rice. Chantal, people have to drink to survive. You could actually make a very strong case that people have to drink more than they have to eat to survive. The practice that you need to take is to look at what people are trying to do to help you. Because you defeat your own ability to be successful with your own personal lust for food. And then when people try to help you in a good-natured way, when people try to share their experience with you in a kind and loving manner, you defeat it with ignorance and arrogance. I'm now going to leave you with the top comments from the last video. I appreciate each and every one of you watching this. And unlike those chips, I'll be back as soon as I can with more commentary.